Hello, my name is Mike Vallely, and I'm here to talk about my best, worst, and most memorable slams. Well, where do you start with something like this? I'm trying to block most of this out, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think the most significant worst slam that I had in my early days of skating was right after I got sponsored by Pal Peralta. I was skating in my hometown of Edison, New Jersey. We had a spot called the No Side Banks. It was an asphalt embankment to a curb. If you saw a photo of it, you'd be like, you skated that? <laughs> From the embankment onto the curb, I go up into a, a blunt position. I'm grabbing probably mute and I'm gonna pull back in. And I just paused there for a couple seconds. And then I thought, oh, you know what would be really cool? It's like a rocket blunt. And my friend was standing right there and I go, what about a rocket blunt? While I'm still in the blunt position. And he's like, huh, a rocket blunt? And I was like, yeah. And so I switch from the way I'm holding the board to both my hands on the nose. And I put both my feet on the tail and my wheels rolled off the curb. And as my wheels rolled off the curb, my hands went between my legs and my face goes like this. So violent and so painful, it didn't hurt. If you ever see me, after a slam laying on the ground and milking it, you could probably guarantee I'm okay. But if you see me hit the ground and then get up and start running, you know I'm fed up. <laughs> I ran about like half a block and all the skaters that we were skating with chased me down the street. And I remember I was leaning against a telephone pole like this and they're like, let us see, let us see, let us see. Are you okay? Let's see. And I go, is it bad? Their faces just went white. My nose was basically dangling off my face. It was like over here. <laughs> I had split my chin, split both my lips, cut my forehead open. So my entire face was just obliterated. I call my mom. She shows up at my buddy's house and I have a towel around my head. And she goes, well, let me see. I go, you don't want to see this. And she like kind of forcefully pulls the towel off. And she was a nurse and she's just like, you know, nearly fainted. Just couldn't believe it. Uh, I had to get reconstructive surgery on my nose. That was the first time I ever broke my nose and I've broken it like nine times since then. So I was trying to do this handrail that I, I caveman onto this handrail in public domain. But we were skating there one night and I decided I was gonna, you know, ollie board slide this rail. I don't really even know what happened, but I go to ollie onto this rail and there's no ollie. And suddenly I'm just over it. And I put my hands down to protect my nuts and I slid down the hand railing and at the very end, I, my hand stops sliding and I just kind of leapfrog off and I land on my feet. And I'm like, hey, all good. And then I look at my thumb and basically it was like a can opener. Like the skin on my thumb was opened up. I could see my entire innards of my thumb. There was no flesh over the top of it. It was like peeled backwards. And I was like, oh shit. And I took, I took it and I closed it. I just like, like it was like, like putting a condom on or something like, and then all of a sudden blood started squirting out of it. And I was like, holy shit. And I had to take my shirt off and I wrapped it up in my shirt. So we go into a dorm and I got on a payphone and I called my mom and I was like, yeah, you need to pick me up. While I was on the phone, the shirt fell off my hand and blood started shooting. It was getting on the walls, on the glass, on the floor. It looked like a crime scene. I was skating at a contest in Tempe, Arizona. At the time, this was, I think this was 87 or 88. They loved building these super long board slide, like PVC board slide things, you know? You just get on it. And all of a sudden I looped out and I fell and my arm, this arm, yeah. This arm, my right arm fell on top of the PVC. And as I go to stand up, I feel like the rail lifting off the ground with my arm. And all of a sudden I hear this and the rail falls to the ground. And I look at my arm and there's this giant puncture wound in my arm. And then I look down and there's a nail sticking out of the PVC, but it's the nail head. So this nail hadn't been hammered all the way in and my arm fell on it and the, net, the, the head of the nail went through my arm. And when I go to stand up, it like caught on my arm and I lifted it up for a second and it popped out. And as I'm looking at it, Barry Zariski, who was a, a trainer, and medic, he grabs me and he covers my eyes. Don't look at it, don't look at it. Like I wasn't gonna faint or anything. I wasn't having any sort of reaction, you know? I was just like, whoa, shit. Okay, I was on tour in 1990 with Ed Templeton, Chris Pastris, Felix Arguez, and we were in Springfield, Missouri. This day I met Steve Barra. We're doing this demo and I'm totally focused on the demo and this guy comes up to me on crutches. Comes up to me and crutches. He's like, hey, Mike, do like a Christian Asoy frontside slasher on that ramp to wall, man. And I was like, I don't take requests. I skated away and I came back and he's still riding me to do this 
frontside slasher. And uh, I don't know what came over me, but I was like, all right, I'll, I'll show you a frontside slasher. So this was my first go and I over, overdid it. And I go flying up the wall and suddenly I'm just like lose control. The board just shoots out above me and I kind of like loop out and I come down and I just hit the ground and then I get up and I'm like, where's my board? Bam! Board comes down. The kingpin of my board goes into my skull. It hangs in my head for a second and then drags down the back of my head. I don't, I don't know, is this visible? Is this scar visible? I felt myself start to fall, like, like pass out. And I thought to myself, you're at a demo. You cannot get knocked out. <laughs> and I fought off the blackness. <laughs> and I remember picking my hat up and I put my hat back on. And as I pulled the hat on, this sheet of blood just came over my face, just came pouring down my face. I took a roll of duct tape and I just duct taped from one ear to the other and I put my hat back on. And that was what I did instead of going to the hospital. <laughs> 1995, I was skating the Powell mini ramp. I remember I was skating with Mike Santa Rosa. We were sessioning the ramp. I'd always done stale fishes and I thought, man, I really just want to get my stale fishes, like lay them out the way Gons would lay them out, you know? So I started getting them and I was like really holding them behind me and I was like, oh, I got it. I decided, okay, I'm gonna go for a big one. And Santa Rosa was on the other side of the ramp from me and famous last words, man, I go, in your face <laughs> and I dropped in and I laid it out there right in his face and I hung it out too long and locked up and I hit the bottom like a ton of bricks I hit my left shoulder and I knew something broke and as I sat up I was like oh I think I broke something and then I went like this like to see what the damage was I kind of went like this and it sounded like if you took like a, a fabric like a t-shirt and just ripped it <laughs> the sound that I heard was this muscle in my shoulder tore three quarters of the way through. And then I was really in a lot of pain. This was a sort of a critical time in, in, in my skate career. Earlier that year, I won the first ever Tampa Pro and I was supposed to be retired before that competition. Then I won the Tampa Pro and I saw an opportunity for, for me to continue being a pro skater. And when I took that slam, the window's closing on me to have a skate career from this day forward. So I have to get back as soon as possible. So as soon as I had any minor range of motion in the collarbone and in the shoulder, I got back on my board. And I, I went back to uh, the next year's Tampa Pro. I fell, hit my shoulder, rebroke the collarbone, retore the muscle. So then the second X Games was the early summer of 96. And I came off of a kicker, I did a big Japan Air or something, maybe fatty to flatty, I don't even know. I just remember hitting the asphalt and sticking and falling and I broke it again, broke it, tore the muscle again. Three times in less than a year, I was supposed to go to Europe right after that. I was gonna cancel the trip. I was like totally depressed. I just thought my career was over. I thought it was over and I was gonna cancel the trip, but I was the team manager for Powell. So I, there I am, I go to, go to Germany. I don't bring a skateboard. The contest in Germany, we actually end up boycotting the contest. And uh, everyone says, oh, let's just, there's, there's a outdoor cement skate park. Uh, we're all just gonna meet there and just have a jam. Oh, that sounds cool, they got a snake run there. I was thinking, well, maybe I'll set a board up. <laughs> set a, I'll just set a board up and I'll just cruise. But the top of the snake run, before it opens up into like real big turns and a bowl, it has like a, like a real tight little half pipe with metal coping. I roll in and I go lock up into a frontside 50-50. I never frontside 50-50s. I go to turn it in, I just lock up. Boom! I want to say I broke it again, but it was just broken like a week before. And I got up and I walked off and I just walked and walked and walked and walked and I found myself in some field and I sat down. I just remember like one tear going down my cheek. Like, it's fucking over, man. Like, I'll never get better. Towards the end of the 90s, we were at a contest in Paris, France at Disneyland. I get to the event and the promoter comes up to me and goes, Mike, I built this obstacle for you. It's this rainbow doorway. So like you can kind of like ride up, kick turn over the thing. I do this trick on transition where it'd be like a huge Japan traveling blindside to fakie. And every now and then I would up the ante on it and kick the back leg off. So it'd be a one foot Japan traveling blindside to fakie. It's towards the end of my run in the finals and I pop up on top of this quarter pipe and Costin standing on the quarter pipe. 
And he goes, what are you going to do? And I was like, I'm going to get hurt. And he's like, ha ha. Yeah, ha ha. I was joking. I was like basically trying to say to him, I'm going for some serious shit right here. I'm up there, Japan one foot. I come in, but I land too low in the transition. So when I land, my board turns like half, halfway, which sends me right to my face. Bam! Right to the fucking ground, man. And I popped up real quick. And I remember Tony Hawk was sitting, like he had like a front row seat, like his face was like, and I got up and I didn't, I thought my face was obliterated, but I, I didn't care. I just got up and I was just, I'm gonna walk it off. I'm just, I, and I just started walking and I, and I had my chin up. And then all of a sudden I was like, you know, I took a knee, I took a knee, but then I got back up and I kept walking. I had to tell myself, no, not in front of everyone. I don't remember who I went up to, but I was like, is my, like, you know, what? They're like, no, it's your chin, it's your chin. I had a, a lot of hair on my chin then, and I had this big hole. So I didn't go to the hospital. And uh, later that night, I was laying in bed, and I remember thinking, I kept touching it, no. No, this is bad. I took a taxi or something. I go to a hospital. It's like two in the morning. And they're like, no, 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 no. I'm like, what? What do you mean, no? <laughs> I was like, you're fucking, you know, motherfuckers, you're fucking stitching me the fuck up, right? I finally, I grabbed this doctor. I was like, I need your fucking help. He's like, the hair, the hair. I'm, I can't, there's too much hair. I was like, I shave it. He goes, you shave it. And I go in the bathroom and I'm just like, like ripping the hair out of my chin, you know, off my face. And then uh, I go up to him and he's like, okay. So he stitched me kind of with an attitude. It kind of hurt. What happened is actually I had broken my jaw. I never had medical attention for that. It just eventually, I have a clicking in my left ear to this day. Like if, you know, breaking my ankle in 2005 would add up with breaking my collarbone to take my Ollie away from me forever. <laughs> I was skating a demo in Westchester, Pennsylvania, which is BAM's hometown. I'd been doing this tour for a few years called the Man vs. Skate Park Tour. I'm probably about 15 minutes into the demo, and I go up for an invert to fakie on a quarter pipe. On the way back in, my front foot slips off the nose of the board, and the rubber on the shoe catches on the cement floor and it just stuck and the ankle inside just kept going and it just twisted all the way around. I heard it, you know, it was just like, Rah! I heard it crack. But I was in such the zone that I thought, I know my ankle just broke, but I might be able to skate for two more minutes. I stood up and my toes were facing that way. <laughs> you know? I was like, I am not skating for two more minutes. Levi Brown was with me and he had seen me fall so terribly so many times and get up and continue on with the show. And so I'm laying there for a bit and I'm trying to get his attention, you know, and he's just like, you know, he's really milking this one, you know? And he comes over and I was like, hey dude, I, I broke my ankle, you gotta, you gotta call 911. And he's like, what? But I was never the same skater after that ankle injury. And I've told you this before, Chase, that I didn't really feel good about anything I did on my board from that moment until I filmed my battle commander. My battle commander was the first time I skated where I thought, I'd sign my name to that, you know? Oh, there's a, uh, it's the most significant injury in my whole fucking career. I can't even remember my fucking injuries, man. It's called a Liz Frank joint fracture. I did a invert on a quarter pipe. The invert was just me going to the wall. Like I might as well have been doing a kick turn in my mind. Like I did the invert and I'm already thinking about the next trick and my back foot comes off the, just comes off the tail my toes go into the ground and I sit on my heel with all my weight. The top of my foot just goes, boom, just buckles. It really hurt. I get back to California and I go to see a, 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 a specialist. He sits me down and he says, I just want you to know you have one of the most significant foot injuries you could suffer. You will never skate again. You most likely will never walk right again. You'll probably have deformity in your foot. We won't really know until the swelling comes down, then we'll do another x-ray. After we do a second set of x-rays, MRI, then we'll schedule surgery. So you're looking at being in a cast for a couple weeks, then an MRI, then probably cast it for another several weeks, then a surgery, then cast it for six months, and then we will evaluate the future of your foot. And I said, oh, I'm going on the Tony Hawk tour in 52 days. He said, no, you didn't hear me. You're not going anywhere. I go, look, meet me halfway here. Let's deal with it on my terms. I'm going on tour in 52 days. How can you get me on that tour? He said, you're not listening to me. Son, you have destroyed your foot. 
your skateboarding days are over. So I was in a cast for a couple days, so I told my wife to go to the hardware store and get a, a saw, and I sawed the cast off in my garage. And then I sent her out to go buy a stationary bicycle. So I just would ride the stationary bike with my foot flat for hours, man. I called the doctor, told him I cut the cast off. He said, I never want to see you again. I ended up filming uh, my Black Label video part a day or two before I left for the, the Hawk Tour, and then I went on the Hawk Tour and I think my skating on the Hawk Tour speaks for itself. So we were filming for a banging in, here in the barracks. I wanted to get one more trick. It was coming close, coming close, knew I was gonna get it. And the building had just started to fill up with people. So I was feeling this extra pressure to get it, but I was also, had the eyeballs on me, so I was like more pumped to try to get it. I don't know what happened, man. I was, I was on it and I went to yank in. I think I uh, over-rotated a little bit. And as I was coming in, I just slammed to the ground. so fucking hard and it was this side i thought i just fucking did my shoulder again i finally did it i finally did my shoulder again you know but i bounced off my shoulder and i was in extreme pain but like i said i was like in the zone and I, and everyone was there watching and i was like i got this man so i knew i just had to get up and 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 do it right away and that's exactly what happened i went back flew out landed it and uh I remember like Costum was right there filming and I skated right past him and I skated right towards everybody and I basically left the building. And it turns out I fractured my pelvis. <laughs> but I didn't know that for a few days. <laughs> There's a lot more, but we don't want this to turn into a five hour nine club. <laughs>